Hello, and welcome to the Weird Waves Podcast. My name is Taylor, and this is episode 61. On this week's podcast, we are talking to Priscilla Judas. She is a XR artist. She is a filmmaker, a screenwriter, and she is a big wave surfer. She became a big wave surfer in the last five years after never surfing before that point. This interview is absolutely fascinating. It's extremely technical, and I learned so much about what XR is, what that art can do, and how it's going to transform surfing. It's super fascinating, lots of super interesting ideas I've never even heard of or thought of. Um, It's very cool to see people trying out these really creative, unique, adventurous ideas and relaying them to the world of surfing. I know you guys are going to love this one. It's really unique. Here it is. Sound. Yeah. You have a beautiful hair. Oh my God. Oh, thank you. I'm a hairdresser. That's my actual job. Oh, wow. You, you, anyways, you, you do that very well. I can see. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have similar kind of bangs here. That's funny. <laughs> it's <laughs> i couldn't cool. believe this uh european you know vision about hair it's something like i cannot you know i i've got it in france when i was living there and i couldn't i couldn't become become a, a hawaiian girl by hair if i can tell <laughs> no you needed the banks yeah i need yeah i need it's my it's mine you know it's, it's like me <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny how it changes everything, um, because I got bangs like maybe two two years ago or mm-hmm. a year and a half ago, and I'm always like, I want to be this like surfer girl, <laughs> you know, like have this like back to how I used to be. But with the bangs, it looks just a little bit more like stylish, you know. Oh, really? I think I think, I think it's just a little something. In Hawaii, no one, no one has. No one has like, bang. Like zero. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about it here. We just moved to Florida, so that's where we're at. And I haven't, um, I think maybe that's true here too. There's not too many people with bangs. I never really thought about it like that, but I guess that's probably. <laughs> now we're talking about bangs, but hey. <laughs> so living in Florida, could you yep. tell me a little? about your project so i can you know see better at first i I need to tell you i love the title i love the name you know oh thank you so where is it from um so it's from me i guess i was uh so we my husband and i came originally from chicago to florida we moved here uh, a couple months ago but when we started the podcast it was like over a year ago now and we were surfing on Lake Michigan, and I was driving and listening to a different podcast talking about people who should start podcasts, okay? And I said, I said, oh, well, I've met a lot of pretty interesting people surfing. And um, then as I was driving this long drive, I just thought, like, surfing on the lake is weird, weird waves, okay, Weird Waves podcast, okay, makes sense. And then, yeah, we just kind of started it like that. And um, the objective, uh, why weird? I mean, are you looking for a special kind of people? No. Um, I think it's kind of, it started as one thing and it's kind of turned into something different. So I think we, I started just by interviewing people that I knew. Um that were surfing the lake, the same lake as I was. And then it kind of started to go, um, we started learning more people that are surfing, the waves that they're surfing are weird. And then it kind of turned into just anybody. And um, it, it kind of became less about uh, weird waves and more about people who surf. Because okay. everybody's kind of weird, if you uh. think about it. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> interesting, interesting vision. I agree. Yeah. Yes, yes. So oh, that's... let me put my phone sure. in silence. Yeah, because that's the, exactly the moment when people can start calling you and yep. sending you messages. Oh, can you see? 
Yep, and that's Karimba. how it happened. <laughs> okay, now. No, just a second. Now it's really off. Okay. <laughs> so you have been doing that for one year already. So many people, many interesting people then. Yeah, we've had already 60 episodes. Oh, wow. And you publish the video too. Yes. Not only the voice. Oh, yeah. We, interesting. Yeah, we changed that because we found that during the pandemic, um, our, our listenership kind of went down for the audio and we had people wanting to watch the video. And it's cool because, um, you know, you get a different sense about it. You get the facial expressions. You get to see what people look like. It's kind of like a different thing. And it's kind of like, I mean, I like to watch video podcasts too. So, you know, you kind of put it on in the background, maybe when you're cooking or, you know, it's, it's kind of like you're listening and you're only kind of half watching. So people like it. So we just, it's not hard to do the video. It doesn't take a lot of um, more time or anything like that. So we just decided to upload everything so yeah that's nice that's what we do we Thank just you. talk to people yeah yeah it's, you it's found very, me like yeah well I think so I was trying to think before we started how that happened but I think we interviewed Vicky and you followed us from her is that what happened I think probably yes because yeah. Vicky Durand is a sponsor Okay. Uh, she had she wrote this book, Wave of Woman book, and she mm -hmm. found me. She found me on Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, we became friends. And then uh, by our relationships, we figured out, and I, we found a way of make a collaboration. And I have been helping her to sell her book, and she have been helped me with structure in Hawaii and a lot of some kinds of sponsorships i mean we we change it's a sponsorship alive we're best friends now we're good friends that's so cool that's really cool so are you in the same part of hawaii that she is yes we are in oahu mm -hmm. but i have a break news is i i'm moving back to europe next month oh so wow it's like, yes <laughs> that's a big thing uh, and we just started communicating that because uh yeah it was a big change. It, it is a big change, but the planet, the whole planet in, is in a big change. And the waves, the big waves are coming to, to are going to Europe too. So they, they will be there too, not only in Hawaii. By the way, they're right, right now in here. Good, we have good waves today. That's I'm cool. Gonna, I think I saw that on your stories. Um, I'm going to surf, by the way, soon. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I, <laughs> I can, uh, I know that feeling of like the anticipation or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are you, how, how did you end up in Hawaii, I guess? Are you originally uh, from, where are you from originally? I'm from Brazil, from okay. Rio, Rio de mm -hmm. Janeiro, where I grew up too. And I went out uh from brazil to europe uh 16 years ago when i went to the film industry i majored in film in france after finishing the fine arts school uh, majority in brazil and uh, working in film industry i had big waves i didn't know yet i was already riding big waves, that's the thing, because we're talking about the soul of surfers, right? A kind of surfer is who needs some special power in waves. And now I can see better the things. But in this moment, I was just studying film and starting working in the film industry in Europe. And I had a very complicated relationship with a boyfriend that's the reality it was if i can translate correctly that would be an abusive can i say that in english it's mm -hmm. when the the relationship is very bad for you abusive 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 yes there we go mm -hmm. so uh in the same moment in the same period of my life in pa living in paris i saw 
I saw um, Eddie, I call uh, Big Waves Invitational in Waimea rolling on the internet and I felt a call, you know? So that's how I decided to learn technically how to surf. But I was already in the water all time. Even if I was living in Paris, I was all time going to Portugal or France to the ocean, or I was swimming in the lakes or in the swimming pool. I am an athlete since I was a baby, if I can say, because I was already swimming when I couldn't walk, walk yet, you know, so I could move, I could control my movements about move, move you know, mm -hmm. about to change of place when I was in the water, but I couldn't walk yet. So I was uh, already having uh, a kind of life in the water better than outside of water. So I grew up, I had um, a kayak from Christ from Santa Claus, you know, for Christmas when I was seven years old. So uh, my artistical life, you know, and my artistical vision was built in the same time than water. So water is art for me somehow too. So I was always playing, creating new things. I'm a watercolor my water colorist you know so water is inside of my life since every day since since every day so when i decided to surf you know to learn how to surf correctly i was already mother for example you know it was like only five years ago but wow but i grew up in rio and i right. was swimming i was attending competitions for, as a swimmer you know, so about water, I was already at home, but I didn't know this kind of life could help me somehow to, to jump some steps for getting big waves. Because the thing is, you can surf 30 years, for 30 years, for your whole life, but nothing's guaranteed you can ride big waves because it's about kind of a kind of surfing a kind of wave a kind of people you know and i didn't know yet everything was already well prepared you know about to be well to be calm in a conflict zone in big waves for example i was already training apnea since i was a baby but i didn't mm -hmm. know i was training because you know i didn't give a name for this everyday activity it was just your life it was my life it was normal to be in the water in conflict zones but it was my game my playground somehow i was growing up in rio where we ha we have big waves we have good waves by the way and uh, um, i was already in this kind of weird weird environment you know so i was training myself for big waves but i didn't know when i decided to learn surfing it was about big waves but i didn't know it's about that yet you know i couldn't code because i didn't have this reference yet you know so i decided to go to brazil so i i've got separate of this ex boyfriend very complicated relationship i stopped i broke with that and i started surfing um in the same period so it was like um i was in the best moment of my life professionally i was uh recognized uh technically and artistically by the french academy of cinematography uh, that means i was eligible to the caesar what is new as the oscar in europe mm. so i could finally leave Paris, you know, a place where the ocean is not, is not anywhere, you know, we cannot see in Paris, the ocean. So I moved to Brazil trying to Sorry, go back. I'm just yes. going to stop you for one second, just for yeah. clarification. So you felt, um, you felt like you could leave Paris because you accomplished a goal. Is that what you're trying to say with your filmmaking? Yes, because the thing is, when you work in the film industry, when you want when you need to get inside of the of the industry the mm -hmm. film industry you need to be in strategical places you know you need to be there 
you need to cross some kind of people you need to go some kind of event so i was living in paris for that i was living in paris for five year five years and a half and uh, finally i felt i could leave uh, sorry i could leave paris and have invitations for partnerships and works you know i wouldn't need to be there physically you know so when i felt it when i felt it it was like everything the same time you know so i saw like okay now i have a big gate for surfing open to me so i went to brazil with my kid my 10 years old kid he was a little bit younger and i gave him a beach life gift you know we were living in front of the best surf spot in rio for me and uh, i i was uh, having uh, different coaches i started in the northeast of brazil in bahia uh, with um, a, a nice school for for girls um and then i just realized that i was in the middle of boys too so it was a, a nice uh, surfing school when i started surfing in since the first test you know the first try the first way for that uh, i had some uh skills with the teacher and uh, i i've got uh, better i improved very quick i didn't know it was quicker the normal, you know, because I didn't have this reference, you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. couldn't compare with other people because I, uh, I'm a surfer today who is learning about surfing culturally, you know, because I'm just from Brazil, from Rio, that's my surfing culture somehow, you know, because I was studying art, I was studying films, I was living fine arts life, but I didn't study about surfing before because it wasn't my passion, you know, it wasn't my thing before. So, uh, well, I got a passion for difficult waves somehow because it was easier for me because I had all this calm when I was in a wipeout that I bring from all my life in, in the water, you know? I was swimming fast and well and get tired less than normal people so that's how naturally i became uh, someone in the middle of big riders i didn't know i was chasing this kind of wave yet you know so i have i had friends new friends who were surfing this kind of waves they bring me to surfing with them and people saw me surfing these waves and i started having some invitations and i had some Mentors, important mentors like uh, Daniel Friedman, who is a Brazilian longboarder, very new in the surfing industry, has as someone who built the surfing industry too about competitions and etc. In the 60s, 60s, so he saw me surfing, so he helped me surfing better uh, to see better the things, the forecasts without apps. So all this way was by heart you know why i'm not in competitions i attended some competitions sometimes but it's just about to to help the woman surfing movement you know so it's just about to to help to motivate people you know to show them my example my way of surfing which is very special because i started five years ago but in a kind of competition like that where i was just for surfing, just for motivating people, someone saw me and invite me to come to Hawaii, because all it was also a longboard, a classic competition for making points by a classical surf. But the swell was big, the the swell was very strong, and the ocean wasn't easy. And I was there for surfing, not for making points, because I'm not in competitions, uh, spiritually talking speaking so i was getting the bombs out there while the other girls who were in the same heat than me were making points you know they were making footwork and mm. loose riding in the inside and i was getting the bombs in the outside so somehow people saw clearly who 
I am who I was in the, that moment. And I had an invitation by a Swedish woman who invited me to make part of, pro, of a project at National Geographic. And I came uh, here for 10 days and I invest from my pockets to stay one month. So I was supposed to be here in Hawaii for one month and I stayed like forever. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I had some other propositions too. I had all partnerships, incredible partnerships. I couldn't believe it was happening to me. You know, someone who weren't certain I wasn't surfing six years ago, you know, but now I could like, for, for example, to train with what is for me, one of the best, um, tall riders, uh, you know, um, tall, big riders, um, in the world is what, uh, it's Carlos Burley. I trained towing with him in Hawaii, you know, we made a partnership. So it was a sponsorship. And uh, Wave a Woman book found me too. So it, it was another sponsorship. Interesting because uh, I was just realizing in the same time COVID 19 was arriving, you know, and making all the planet to get upside down. Yeah. I, was, I was finally standing up. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like. Okay, I understood. I need to stay more time here. I need to be focused in surfing, in training for that, and feeling and following my heart. And that's what I made uh, in 2020 while COVID 19 was changing the life of people, it was changing mine too. And that was the way. So, uh, my audiovisual projects keeping rolling, but as the whole planet, all these projects. They, they've got uh, unpacked of this year, of course. So the whole film industry is still figuring out. Some things are restarting, you know, but they're very uh, prudent because it's a big economy and we don't have the film festivals happening so far physically. So it's like, uh, it was like the perfect and the unique moment for me to make this for me you know <laughs> it was like it's, it's so wild it's so <laughs> wild but it's good to hear actually i think it's really important for people to hear that um you know as kind of the the film industry stood still you were able to use that as a moment to for everything to kind of come into place for you that's so crazy Yes, and also that I didn't tell you yet is when I was ready to go back to Switzerland where I live officially, uh, I had a proposition of a big sponsorship by a technology company called Board Shaper, what is mm -hmm. a technology provider. In, she was Camille, Camille McClay, was looking for someone for representing her company and design technology solutions for the surfing industry and starting where? In Hawaii. So she <laughs> found me in here. So I was, you know, I'm still working for sure, representing this company. You know, it's like another kind of sponsorship for athletes too. So we're talking about the future in the next athletes too, because a lot of surfers are losing sponsorships now because of COVID-19 packs. You know, so what I can tell is what, everything was so real, you know, so real. And I couldn't say no for that because I couldn't move anyways. I couldn't go back to Europe in the, you know, in the heart of the pandemic times, you know, I, we couldn't get a flight for a moment, right? For a while. So it was mm -hmm. the, the exact moment where I was having new sponsorships in here. And I have a sponsorship for uh, boards to what is very expensive if you, if you if you ride big waves because you break boards and you need special shapes you need you need a special environment you need to train and train and coach are expensive too so it's like I had all this structure you know only for creating technology solutions for this and who were the clients my friends it was already <laughs> my environment you know what I mean? yeah. 
<laughs> that's it's just it's uh it's so like serendipitous it's just incredible i'm really curious to what the what is technology if you are able to talk about it what are technology solutions for the surf industry what does that look like what is what do you mean when you're talking about that that's super interesting well as um we can talk about the concept of my activities and then we sure. can talk about also the this brand concept too my concept is technology can humanize people so the mm -hmm. idea is my idea for me when i'm using technology for anything even if i'm using iphone or computer for talking to you it's about to help people to get better to improve their existence in this planet honestly talking it's not he hypey it's not hippie anymore <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about high technology but using a good way you know so all my projects fiction projects or you know immersive tools solutions projects every day that have this in common it's about humanize people again by technology you know so this brand uh, found me so board shaper Camille McClay found me and told me, I want to help small local business in the surfing industry at first. So how could we find the good solutions, Priscilla? So I get in touch with my friends, with you know my environment. I look at all this around me differently, trying to find the problems. What are the pro problems at first? Because for finding solutions, we need to know the problem, right? So I was seeing around me people uh, breaking their uh, business, closing forever for good, you know, because of COVID-19. Hawaii, for example, now we don't have tourists on the streets you know we go outside we don't see people from outside i mean mm -hmm. you know people coming for 10 days for example we don't see that so what's happened a lot of stores are closing you know surfing shops people are still surfing by the way people are surfing now more than never before because they have more time they're at home you know they're investing in quality of life in, in a healthy life in, in get their our high immunity on the top so surfing makes part of all this by the way the shapers are selling more boards now than ever before that's another impact but it's a good impact mm -hmm. so people are surfing more now but the surfing shops they're selling products only for local people the tourists are not in here anymore so oh we found a problem in the surfing industry for small local business their shops their surf shops are empty right so one ex we're still figuring out because as a good solution it needs to be solid and it needs to to be alive by itself you know so we're still studying the models of the solutions, but so far uh, we found this problem. Uh, we found another problem too in the surfing industry is about the competitions. Uh, it's like, I have the numbers I can, I can send to you later, you know, so you can use the informations correctly. Uh, but uh, I think it's around 300 competitions canceled in 2020 you know mm -hmm. worldwidely so when we think only local um local surfing competitions are happening in some areas like australia only australia can keep the some, the local uh surfing competitions happening so far mm -hmm. all the rest canceled some small ones, imprudent ones, maybe are happening, you know, but officially they're not happening. If you go to the WSL homepage, you can see how many contests, surfing competitions uh, were canceled this year. And other ones, they're just waiting, uh, trying and hoping it's going to happen. But so far, nothing is sure, nothing's guaranteed because the countries are closed too.
for coming to the United States. Actually, you know already, right? You mm -hmm. cannot come in if you don't have a real reason. And surfing competitions is a collective event. It's like one of the last things <laughs> yeah. in the priority list for, you know, uh, restart again mm -hmm. as a normal activity. So, uh, so the surfing competitions are not happening right so the money where the money is in the surf industry is there is no flow anymore right. there is because something it, yeah missing it's mostly coming from advertisements right for these surf competitions and then um so the advertising is missing because the surf competitions aren't happening and then the money is missing from the surf shops the local surf shops because the tourists are missing mm -hmm. is that yeah because it's like a chain, chain, mm -hmm. chain everything uh, needs to be standard up working you know mm -hmm. we have five fingers for, for making our hand work correctly for right mm -hmm. so it's like in this industry we have different sports and we're we're, we're studying the most important stops so uh we saw also the north shore surfing museum mm -hmm. as a project and as all the museums everything is closed no one can access so it's another problem too for the surfing industry is the culture is the legends where are the legends now where the new generations can hear more from the legends you know who is going to be the next legends in the surfing industry in the future, for example? That's a good question. Huh? So if they lose all the old school concepts and vision and philo philosophy of a soul surfer, what's going to be the surfing industry in the future? So that's also a problem because the museums cannot be accessed with the COVID-19 facts and the legends, the channels, you know, the channel is already break somehow for other mm -hmm. reasons and we all, we are also take advantage of this covid-19 facts for helping the whole surfing industry keeping breathing the soul surfing spirit you know what i mean mm -hmm. so uh it's like in the 50s in the 60s for example a good surfer who was an artist who was an artist you know because he was creating new things, creating new gears, creating a new industry, a new market, a new way of life, a new way of live this life about monetizing this sport, you know, transforming this marginal and bad boy thing in a, you know, a, a clean work, right? So they were creators, they were innovators, they were pioneers. Where are they actually? Where are they now? What mm -hmm. are they doing now? You know, so we are studying also about the concept of the best way, the best surfing industry in the future. So we're building that together. It's a community. It's not a brand, a private brand. By the way, it's also about innovation that we're talking about because this kind of sponsorship is totally new. You know, even my friends who have been surfing the surfing industry as a professional for 30 years, 40 years, the legends, we discussed about a, a lot that, uh, a lot about that. And um, they tell me, uh, Priscilla, I have never seen this kind of sponsorship. That means it's not a brand who is sponsoring me, it's a concept, you know? I provide the technology for helping you. How can I help you? And you can build this solution with me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm here for making these bridges and we're making a, a pause now. I'm going back to Europe for taking care of the other projects, immersive content projects in fictions and uh, immersive tools for the surfing industry and also for the film industry, my two lives. Uh, and I, now <laughs> they're I'm coming together yeah now i can officialize all this you know these these loves it's my patience but now i can say clearly officially in the same interview you know for example i can say i work in the surfing industry and i work in the film industry in innovation and in the film 
traditionally to 2D. Uh, I write films and I can direct, I can make the direction of photography. I, I'm not interested in, in be a DOP anymore for others because I don't have enough time because I have now the surf industry in my life and I'm taking care of this by technology pro pro projects as solutions. And I have also a surf simulator be built now, be building now as a prototype and it's gonna help probably the ga uh, Olympic games. So let's see how life is gonna be with all these impacts. And uh, I'm observing and answering your question, how we can create these solutions. It's just about relationships. It's just about connections. If we can see, you know, observe well the environment around us, make the good connections and hear from each connection, we can figure out what's the problem and starting building the solutions by all feedbacks, you know, from this community, because we're talking about business too. So we need to build together a product, a technological product, product and uh, we need to make it live by itself. You know, it's not about Santa Claus coming and giving the money <laughs> and okay, but I'm gonna give you a gift, but we need to make this gift. You know, this gift is a bridge, if I can tell, you know, it's a bridge in between the technology and the community, you know, and the community can, you know, uh, build the solution. So it can be, make, it can be a map, for example, it can be a platform uh, for the museum. For example, I imagine so far, I can say no problem because it would be wonderful if, if all the people rip off the ideas and, and start <laughs> building a lot of virtual museums, you know, because if you, even if you're in Florida, in Miami, uh, you can access the museum, the North Shore, the North Shore Surfing Museum, for example, and see and know all the boards this museum has, you know, who are the owners, what the story has mm -hmm. each one, you know. So the the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian surfing museum, for example, it's closed. It's a shame because it's where the story is, the history is, all the traditional knowledge, the Polynesian culture before it was colonized by you know, white people in here, all the culture before him, the, the real Hawaiian culture is there too. So how to make it be accessible to people everywhere, you know, by technology. We are making that right now, right? So we can use technology for helping people improve something on their lives, right? So uh, I'm open for new sponsorships and other kinds of technolo technological providers. And I, I'm just realizing um, design, the, the solution designer is someone who can deal well with people and hear, you know, listen and uh, digest. And is someone who have a good vision, a wide vision. And I think surf is perfect for, for this environment, for innovations, you know. So I think it's the perfect way of life. I mean, so far I'm very happy because I built this reality for me. You know, I was in a, a so different um, environment to living in Paris, you know, uh, gray days, no ocean, waves very far. And the, the way of life of Paris, it's very, weird i can say <laughs> and now i'm riding waves and uh i'm preparing myself for going back to europe to switzerland where is a place without ocean either but it's very close to hosegor where i'm planning to go now and nazare with big waves too and galicia and uh, how do how is the pronunciation by the way to Gal galicia it's in between spain and Portugal, Gal Galish country. Mm. I don't Hold know. On. I'll look it up on a map really quickly. Hold on. Beautiful pink, uh, picture you have behind you. Oh, thank you. Let's see here. 
Galicia. Galicia in Portuguese. In between. In between France. Let me check. I think. As I know how to. Oh, my cell phone is still. Germany? Out. No. No, no, no. I, I will. It's a wave or it's a country? No, it's a country. It's huh. a. Galicia or oh, Galiza in Galician. Castilian. Uh, it's a uh, extreme northwest of Spain. It's uh, yeah, it's inside of Spain, but it's an area between okay. Spain and Portugal. It's older than Spain. You know, it's like a, a place where they, they oh speak they have the language. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Um. It's um, I know what you're talking about. It's like it's not its own country, but it is its own country, right? Yeah, it could be um, like Monaco. I became became, you know. So just to tell you, there are amazing waves around there, okay. around this area. It's like amazing for big wave surfers, and um, I'm I'm very happy in exploring all this. And with the same look, you know, I have my technological projects uh, in development in Switzerland. I have a startup there and I will be traveling and producing content, producing films and innovations uh, by virtual reality and also solutions for the surfing industry and in the film industry and surfing. I think it's my, um, my roadmap for the next month. It's just fascinating. Um and inspiring, I think, for two, for your two, like, worldviews to come together in this way. I think it's really cool. I'm, um, I just want to back up a little bit, and, um, because you're, the way you speak, it's extremely technical, which is awesome, but when you talk about immersive, um, or immersion solutions, what does that look like? Can you kind of break that down a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, it's a solution. So, the problem is we cannot make films actually because we cannot travel we cannot make a partnership between united states and france for making a film and in france where my character you know will travel and get a flight to hawaii we cannot make this project right now concretely because we cannot make all this crew travel mm -hmm. from paris to hawaii right so my solution is just one little problem of the whole surfing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm talking about the film industry. Yeah. <laughs> the surf wants to get the, the word. <laughs> sorry. But uh, when we're talking about um, to, to make a film in co production between France and the United States, because it's a natural co-production when you film something in a country, something in another country. So you need to have a partner in this other country for making the paperwork and make the film happen. So mm -hmm. uh, for making this film with this story, we cannot make that right now because we cannot make 120 people travel from France to the United States for, making, for filming the actors doing that. So this small part of the whole film industry cannot happen. So I have already a solution for that by immersive tools. So okay. I have a lot of other solutions for, because it's, uh, this is a big uh, immersive tools solution project. That means uh, replacing the real presence, we would be using virtual reality for making this film. That means to go in this place virtually by technology. The method is different by each region. So we're in exactly in this exact exact. Oof, sorry, we are in this exactly moment um, building uh, the second step of the project, and we're gonna make uh, we're gonna have a prototype very soon uh, in the market for having already um, people using it for shaping it better, you know, and finding the best solution for this step of the whole process of production in the film industry of a film, but also games. So your 
question. Your question was about immersive. What is Im what is an immersive tool? It's some. It's a immersive is about to be in a place where you were not supposed to be. For example, you're in your house. You can get. You can put a headset, a VR headset, and you just open your eyes. You are in Morocco. Mm -hmm. you know and you see people around you so we have different levels of interactivity so we're talking about one kind of product made in virtual reality with a kind of dispositive of virtual reality diffusion you know but okay. we have different kinds of products and we have different kinds of tools by immersive technologies so we can for example uh, I attend, you know, when they were still happening physically, events, uh, worldwide events. Uh, for example, the XR uh, World, the World XR, um, World XR, I forgot the last name. Oh, yes, the World XR Forum in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And it's at it's a one example of event. XR means virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Three kinds of, you know, immersive realities. But we don't know yet which one. I mean, we're going to have new technologies. You know, we don't want to give a new name each, each time. We yeah. just put everything together. So it's XR, you know, XR, it's every immersive technology. So we have new ones, but we're still talking about XR. So into XR, we can have virtual reality. What is, is the easiest one to understand. It's about just to, boom, to change of reality. If you're in your room, you're going to be like in Hawaii at Pipeline you know mm -hmm. so uh, augmented reality it's a different dispositive but it's, it's it is to understand today thanks to instagram and facebook for example you can use augmented reality filters right so it's a technology it can be used in different ways it can promote a brand it can be a storytelling it, you know it can be a fiction it can be so many things in different ways, but it's a kind of technology where your real reality keeps, you know? Mm -hmm. But you have something else in this reality. So that's why it's called augmented reality. It's your reality, your reality augmented somehow. So makeups and, you know, if you want to buy a new bad you can figure out how it's how it would look like you know before it's done in, in europe it's already uh, something very used for you know um new things for your house for example for furniture you can use there is um we have um, it for hair oh that's yeah. nice you can take your picture and put the different hairstyles oh in. i'd like to t to test it with you because <laughs> you know yeah. that's that's very pioneer you know that's a very import, important tool for the whole the, all all the industries because mm -hmm. that's how people are now starting to understand how immersive technology can help them in covid 19 just made it be quicker you know because everybody's looking for this kind of tools so if I can help you to make more money, I mean, not for a bad way, but because you have a good vision, a good product, product, you know, and you have a good community, but your community is break because we cannot be face to face anymore as before. So we mm -hmm. can maybe to find a solution and immersive technologies can be very good for that. How different infinite ways. One of them is this kind of, future mm -hmm. you can make someone so happy just playing with you know so you're helping someone someone already right you're helping someone to sell the servers your servers you know mm -hmm. so so yeah. it's like so many kinds of tools and 
in I just became a designer for these kind of solutions because I know how they work. I know how their potential is actually with you know technology dispositives too because that's something too is the content immersive content is something and the technology dispositive for immersive content is another thing it's like the tvs the con the film and then tv so for making my film to be diffused in this tv this new kind of tv if i can say it's very complicated because it's another rhythm of development you were bit we're we are now better in writing stories immersively <laughs> than the technology can express all this. Okay. And, you know? So you're, so the people essentially are moving faster than the technology at this stage. Yes, yes, yes. We okay. can say that I can prove how I can prove. How can I? The cameras, the immersive cameras, the 360 cameras, Mm -hmm. You know, it's an example how the market is doing, you know, in the last year, if you go back one year ago, we're going to find, we would going to find the same cameras in the market for the same price. Nothing has changed in one year, mm -hmm. you know, about that. So that's a sign. -all. What's the sign? -all? For me, that means people are better stronger more creative more, more creative creative yeah. creative creative thank yep. you people yeah. are more creative thanks to all this hard time you know because people are creating new things and using all the dispositives you know it's like um there is something happening now in the marketing of uh entertainment in general in the film industry with Netflix and the, you know, the real cinemas and theaters closed, no one can go there. And everybody has a smartphone today, you know, everybody is making films. So there is an explosion happening right now. And we're gonna have a new market since next year. We have this year already some signals in one of them is the prices of the things you know, and the evolution of uh, technology, like technological equipments too. So what I'm telling you is COVID-19 became for helping us to use technology in a good way, you know, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people getting together, you know, for making new things happening in Hawaii. I can, say, I can tell people are very open to that, you know, because they're feeling they're feeling uh, the impacts of COVID. We have the bad side, they have, we have the good side, but the thing in the end, the end of the day, what we have is a community opened in happy and excited about to use accessible technology, you know, by mm -hmm. cell phones or something like that for helping the real life finally. So technology now here, and in our projects it's gonna it's being using for the real life you know it's not for being like far from the real life it's the opposite it's for motivating people to be more alive than never before mm -hmm. it's it's fascinating it's just absolutely fascinating to hear you um speak about it in such a way i'm curious so i'm just going to talk this through of my understanding and you can tell me if i'm on the mm -hmm. right track so when you talk about this immersion thing i'm i'm picturing something similar to maybe like oculus something similar to you know like either your phone or something here with <coughs> kind of like the glasses sound um in the surfing world are you seeing that um being like, I'm actually at pipe, or I'm watching, you know, like I'm putting my goggles on and I'm at pipeline or I'm at, you know, Chopu or, and I'm surfing it, or is it more like a different way to observe the WSL or how, like, how are you bringing those two together? And what does that look like in, you know, in maybe five years? What's the goal? 
an example very simple, very easy to understand is Google. Everybody knows Google. Mm -hmm. And what is Google about? It's about everything, right? It's about every single kind of way of life and markets and everything. So in the surfing industry, what I see is a virtual community linked by everything. We're starting in the surfing industry, you know, but the model is the same for the all, all the other industries so uh, and businesses. Um, for example, for the film industry, the tool, the immersive tools, will be about to produce in films, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have different kinds of tools, different different kinds of steps of a production company, film, and etc. In the surfing industry, we have the contests, as I told you. So, for example, we're figuring out immersively how we can help athletes to be in competitions, even if they're not in the same spot. So that means to have a virtual reality surfing simulator that can interact in a so deep level, high performance in actions and reactions, you know, with the body. If you don't have this, this level of performance, you cannot touch this level of the game because mm. Technologically, it's a game. By the way, the Olympic Games, it's a game. So uh, we're going to start in the, the shallowest. That's how you say it, right? The shallowest, uh, when it's shallow, the most shallow possible yeah. level of the game and go to the deepest one in the Olympic mm -hmm. Games with this virtual reality surfing simulator. It's wow. a project. Another project is uh, how to help small local business to sell more. We're going to have an app for helping them to sell, but they will have a community linked with this app, by this app, where by this app you can meet other people. Like as we met, you know, you can discuss mm -hmm. with them, you can figure out her business, you know, you can see if it can, if she can be a partner, if it, she can be sponsored by you or, you know, the opposite. So it's about uh, Instagram, but next level, because we are talking about immersive platforms. You can go in Hawaii virtually and studying surfing there with a legend coach but you are in different continents. That's crazy. Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, crazy, not in yes. the meaning of, of, you know, just crazy shocking, you know, it's, um, it's, it's really, um, I keep saying interesting, but I like the way that you're explaining it. And um, I think that there's a, this very interesting kind of like split that's happened with COVID-19 where in some aspect, people have gone kind of backwards. We've gone back to this kind of like hyper old school version of a lot of things. Kids at home, parents at home, kind of everything being back to the house. But then, as you're saying, we're also going hyper into technology, working from home, you know, um, using technology to be human, as you're saying, like to connect with people. I mean... I was always doing the podcasts this way, but even just calling, you know, video chatting parents or video chatting people that you would usually be seeing because you're not able to see them anymore. Uh, so it's, I've talked to guests about this kind of like going back to the old school version, but I haven't talked as many people about the technology side of things. So when I say crazy, I just mean like, it is to imagine something is very um, it's wild, but it does make sense. And I think you're I would agree with you that COVID-19 just kind of shortened that gap and um, kind of made it more made us more aware of that. But because it, 
if you can see well, the thing is, the planet was already getting warmer before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so to fly, you know, to get flights all the time, it, it was already a problem. The cars, you know, the gas in the air, in the atmosphere, it was already a problem before COVID-19. But COVID-19 has arrived for... Okay, guys, it's, it's not getting warm and it's on fire now. It's, you, don't, you don't move, stay at home. You know, don't move right now. I'm the boss. The nature, <laughs> the nature made that, right? So it's, it's clear, the nature is the boss. We, we were, you know, the whole planet were. It's like people are less scared right now, right? Because it's like in Brazil, I can't tell. <laughs> people are not scared anymore there. But um, I think in May, last May, June, I think May was like, wow, the whole planet was scared and listening to the nature, right? Because the nature was, wait, wait, guys, you, you cannot stay outside anymore because people were really dying. People are still dying, but it's like people are more... Uh, comfortable with the mask, you know, with the new rules, washing the hands and etc. But all of that just for telling you that um yes, COVID-19 gave us um a big message from the nature and what I read is nature is the boss and technology is a tool. It's like a science scientific tool a group of big group of and the the thing is technology needs to be to use by nature you know what i mean for nature for so that's the only way that i see with a good perspective a good spectative you know a good way for um uh each solution any solution you know, uh, we have different kinds of thoughts for each solution. And sometimes people say, huh, but that's impossible. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's cute. You're cute because you're a dreamer. And what I can tell to all these people is um, the logline of my startup is impossible things is my main business. No. <laughs> I love that. that. That is a really good tagline. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's just incredible. It's just absolutely um, so deeply fascinating. I mean, I just and um, it's it's what's funny about it is that it's shocking. Well, at the same time, it's not shocking at all. If that makes sense. Cool. Do you hear me? is shocking, right? Yes. <laughs> of course. But the whole planet it, stopped. It's like, what? It's not a, a Steven Spielberg filming, film, you know? Because I think he didn't write it because it looks too fake. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I would agree with that. It does look too fake. I forgot <laughs> what I was doing the other day, and, and I heard some something... Uh, on the news or something and i just thought it's so crazy that it has to be true because no one would even write it like this if it was a book they'd be like it's not believable, not believable. It's, this book is not gonna sell because no one's gonna believe this it's crazy yes. can it's just... film festival didn't happen this year yeah can you see yeah. how wow is all this so i can tell a solution for you know making this re this system restart even if we cannot be physically there anymore you know it's by technology you mm -hmm. know technology can solve this problem this big financial yeah. problem because it's breaking a lot of economies whole plant whole, whole countries are breaking now because of covid 19. You know that everybody knows. So, why not to build solutions by human? You know, 
it's technology, but with a human vision, you know? It's great. It's just so, this is just so, so great. I, so I have, we're, we're kind of getting towards the hour and I usually ask people kind of three last questions. So I'll ask you those three last questions. Um, but I'm just, I, I really want to thank you for breaking down this technology stuff so well, because it's just super, super interesting. Like, I'm serious. I, I just like, I really just have to say that. So I usually, I ask people first, what is the weirdest wave you've ever served? It can be in any ways of sense of this question, right? Yeah, however you want to take it is how you should take it. Okay. For me, it was coming to Hawaii and riding Waimea Bay 18 Hawaiian feet wave, what means around 11 meters. Wow. And yes, in five years. It's very weird. Yes, because that <laughs> means that means so many things inside of this, you know. So I think that's the, the that one. That one. What is your biggest oh shit moment while surfing? The biggest what? Sorry. Oh shit moment, like like a scary like oh shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was in my life? I was uh, attending a competition once, and the swell was bigger than it was previewed, and it was a very difficult surfing. Yes. And um, the jet ski guy was working as a blind guy you know he was making the worst position he could bring us he was is he was like perfect in doing the the worst thing you know what i mean <laughs> so he left my friend uh, who was in the same heat than me in the the worst conflict zone spot you know and he made the same thing to me and i saw he was doing that so i i left the jet ski before he didn't even saw me i was already gone but okay and i needed to i need to go back to the 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 safe position for waiting the for the next set it was very big the currents were like wow ninja currents i've got i think i don't know four seven big i i don't remember i can't say i can't say in meters but you're american it's okay in feet right it was like yeah feet is fine it was like 12 12 feet in my head like four seven five uh, times you know non-stop i could breathe breathe and then again 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 and i couldn't move out and i couldn't move in and i needed to accept i would get some more on my head for getting the land so i prepared myself but i prepared myself in the both of sides <laughs> if i die i would like to thank for all this <laughs> and if i stay alive <laughs> if i survive of this i will you know I made my promises to God, <laughs> prepare myself, <laughs> and I'm here talking to you today, you know. Well, so <laughs> I survived it, but that's it good. Was, and from this day, you know, since this, I, I cannot attend every competitions anymore because I need to check about, you know, who is making the, the rescues, who is making, who is taking mm -hmm. care of the jet skis and all this. Because sometimes the competitions don't have enough money, so they save money in the wrong side, you know? So yeah. that can happen. No one is see, was seeing me, I was in trouble, and no one was seeing me. It, it was during a competition. 
I was supposed to be filled. Can you see the thing? It can be very dangerous. It, it, yeah. wasn't a, it wasn't a very small competition. So that's the thing. So we need to be uh, very careful in, you know, about competitions too, especially, especially now they have less money than before. So it's like, oh yeah, no, don't go, don't go like that everywhere. I wasn't going everywhere. I just misunderstood about this. I didn't know about the import, how important it is to check this before, you know? So it was, yeah, I will never forget this. And, and by the way, this same day, we lost a good Brazilian surfer in another competition happening in another spot in Brazil. And I can tell it was a very difficult ocean day. Yes. It's crazy. It just shows how important those, those key people can be. Yes. My last question for you is, what is next for you? Next for me is vision. We are starting a new era of vision. The sponsors are looking for vision. I'm talking about surfing industry especially. So mm -hmm. even if you're an amazing surfer, but you don't have a good vision, if you don't have a good communication of this vision, you will not have new sponsors because they need to see what you see. So you need to communicate what you see. You need to print it. So it's a new era of vision for sure. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. This was just excellent. Thank you very much for evoking all this. You know, I'm a soul surfer and I can tell my soul is richer every time, each time I meet people like that. So thank you very much for inviting me for this, you know, special meetings.